Israel is a democracy. It treats its women right. Its women are actually free. Not like the Muslim women who are covered from head to foot in what we could only call what they call a burqa, what I, I would call, you know, shrouds. They are terrible things. They get rickets because they are, don't ever see the sun. Um, I have daughters. I've taught them freedom and uh, that they're equal with men, and they are. And quite frankly, um, our, and I also have a son, but you know, quite frankly, um, the way the Muslim or the Islamic world treats its woman is, is appalling. The Israelis are as close to the Western world as anybody. They have the same beliefs, the same belief structure emanating from the same book. But you know, it's a dynamic little country. It has six million people only, surrounded by 350 million. And if anybody doesn't think that's pretty awe-inspiring, well, they don't know the situation. I'd like you to go out and go and face up to, what was it, what's the times there? It's uh, 6 and 350. Well, you have to go and face up to 50 or 60 people and beat them. That's what you've got to do. See how clever you are and how brave you are. You'll want the best weapons you can find to go and do that. They've been attacked six times. Uh, they've had to defend themselves right from the word go the day they got independence. Now remember that none of those states in, in the south there, whether it be Air, uh, uh, um, Syria or Jordan or Iraq or all of those, they came out of the Ottoman Empire. <coughs> so none of them actually have any prior uh, claim on land before the British and, and French cut it up. So the Israelis are as much right to be there as any one of those states. Absolutely. But the other thing is that if the Arabs wanted to sort this out, they could help their brethren, the uh, Palestinians, and give them land. They've got millions of acres of land unused, which we all know about. But they don't. And consequently, you've got this ongoing friction, which has been designed to be so, attacking the, the Israelis. I'm not a Jew. But I mean, all you've got to do is look at the facts. And I've talked to men who've actually fought there and have been there for Britain and been injured. They said they know where this idea of Israel being in trouble, uh, being the problem, comes from. <coughs> if you've got one man in the, in the ring who keeps on attacking you, you've certainly got to defend yourself. And anybody who doesn't, want, who doesn't believe that, well, I'd love to get in the ring and just show them and see whether they want to defend themselves. Israel needs the best weapons she gets. She cannot afford a war of attrition. She needs that wall up to stop, you know, I mean, I just watched, it. I thought there would have been a war then, because if they didn't stop the attacks on Israel, Israel was going to have to go to war and destroy Gaza, to my way of thinking. That's <coughs> my way of thinking. She put the wall up and stopped a war. She stopped, I mean, the, her people would have demanded that they do something. So, you know, this is all nonsense that I read about people sort of saying these things about Israel. The Jews are excellent people, they are dynamic, they have a very high-tech uh, country which uh, people go to because it is so high-tech. They're just not waiting for oil to come out the ground, they go and find the oil. And they just found a huge reserve uh, out in the Mediterranean, about 50 miles off Haifa. Haifa. So they're not, a, they're not a, a languishing country, they don't wait for the West to go and find it, they go and do it themselves. Um, so, yes, I admire them. They're worth ten of the others. Thank you very much for listening.